Hi, thanks for tuning in to the Ask Valor Masterminds podcast brought to you by CR Gutters and A Advanced Septic Services. My name's Galen. I'm Joe. And we're coming at you from the BD Local Studios in Tacoma, Washington. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Ask Valor Masterminds podcast. My name is Galen. And I'm Joe. And we are coming at you virtually from the BD Local Studios in Tacoma, Washington. Um, this podcast is brought to you by our sponsors, A Advanced Septic Services and CR Gutters. So, Joe, to our new listeners and viewers, tell us how this all started. Absolutely. So it first started as an idea to have a private Facebook group page to bring businesses together to kind of just communicate uh, with one another, ask questions, answer questions, share tips all about uh, business. Uh, And so we thought, what a better way than just to bring on different guest speakers to create a podcast and bring on different guest speakers to talk about all different topics as it relates to business in some form or fashion. Awesome. Awesome. So I want to introduce, uh, give a quick introduction of our guest, Eveline uh, Van Es, from, all the way from the Netherlands. So this is our first truly international guest. We had another guest in Canada, so that's kind of connected to us. But crossing the pond, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Awesome. So our previous episode, Joe, we are lucky and blessed to have the happiest man on the planet, Edwin Edebiri <laughs> of the Happy Neighborhood Project. And Evelyn, I think we met in the Happy Neighborhood Project as, as well. Absolutely. I so Joe, it. what was one of your takeaways when Edwin was on our last podcast? Uh, this is something that I've heard from a lot of successful people, uh, but it's just to surround yourself uh, with successful people and surround yourself uh, with people who've already gone through the things that you're going through. So that way you always have uh, kind of mentors to call upon uh, should you need help with things. Awesome. And then mine was uh, the 24 hour promise. So for our listeners and viewers out there, uh, he, he, what he was speaking about was happiness as a skill. And instead of just snapping your fingers and being happy, you have to make small steps, baby steps. I mean, we've heard it all before in business, Evelyn, you're a business and life coach, but the 24 hour promise, make a, a promise before you go to bed that you'll be happy the next day. If it doesn't work, then you go and, a 12 hour shift, maybe a four hour shift just to get small accomplishments before you kind of go. So um, you guys can check that out on our uh, Ask Valor Masterminds website or our YouTube channel. So we're really excited with our Valor Cares initiative. So Joe, can you tell our listeners and viewers what our Valor Cares initiative is all about? Absolutely. So uh, during COVID, during the start of COVID back in April, uh, we're like, how can we give back to our community and our community of businesses, both locally and kind of nationwide? Uh, And I suppose we could do it worldwide as well. Uh, But we're like, let's give away a website build. So it started out with just one website build uh, every single month. And now we're up to giving away four website builds. So on our uh, Ask Valor Masterminds uh, website, there's a page that says Valor Cares. If you click on it, uh, you can actually go to it and see how you can uh, submit your business information uh, to be selected. Uh, there's a there's a committee of people that choose uh, up to four winners every single month. Uh, as you see on there, there's about three right now. Um, and it's really just because um, to build a website just takes time. Um, but yeah, we're super stoked about it and excited. And it's just, we're just, just so happy and thrilled that we can give back to businesses. Awesome. Now it comes to the part of our podcast, our A-Advanced Septic Pump You Up quote of the day. So I asked uh, Evelyn, can you provide a motivational quote? And I will read it to everyone right now and get a quick thought on it. Your assignment in life is to believe in yourself and discover your unique gift and to live it. So why did you, what motivated, what, what inspires you about that quote? Well, thank you for asking that. And I think um, a lot of people are struggling with uh, getting stuck in their thoughts about, you know, feeling not good enough or insecure or constantly asking themselves questions that are actually taking them away from what is really key in life. And that is really getting to the core of who you are and be able to translate that into your business. And that's what I see a lot of entrepreneurs struggling with, that they're really looking at what others do or they really get carried away by great tips they get from business coaches that you you find tons of in the market that we're in. 
but that really keeps them from looking at themselves and really getting to that core unique gem that all of us are, you know, every single person on this earth is unique. And I think a lot of people um, sometimes forget to really look at that and to really use that. And that's really what you're, you're and that is also what I like about it, because Edwin in the previous um, talked about, you know, happiness, because that's where your happiness and where your feeling of fulfillment is all about. Awesome. Yeah, I think we see it, Joe. You could probably attest to it too. We've come across a lot of different business owners who try to copy another business mm -hmm. and then don't become themselves. They become someone else and then they're not happy. It gets lost. They get stuck in the rat race, right, Joe? Absolutely. Yeah, just just go out there and just be yourself and, and do what you do and then your business should shine from it. Right. So. But a lot of people struggle with, you know, the fact that be yourself is a lot of people think they are themselves or they think they know themselves, but they really do not really get to the core of their being. And um, so that's something I, I love working on people that are really in search of, of who, who am I really? And, and because that's really what is the foundation of getting into a business that feels fulfilled and, and gives you, gives you happiness in life. Right. Well, we'll get into that more, the fulfillment part, because I think a lot of people, our listeners, um, don't have don't have as much fulfillment. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Now we come to the part of our CR Gutters Did You Know segment. So we like to talk about myths, trends, statistics, different things. So in, she discusses this in her upcoming English version of the book, right, Eveline? But um, so competition, does competition exist? So you just, we just talked about it a little bit. A lot of business owners will want to copy another business. I want to be like them because I'm just as skilled, but it's not really them as their business. So um, does competition exist? Why is that important for us? Yeah, I believe competition doesn't exist actually. And, um, and it's, and, and I think especially in a lot of cultures, and I think especially the American culture is really about competition, is really fed about being best, being best in school, being best in class, and, and some other cultures are too. And I think that really carries, carries away with a lot, you know, it, it brings a lot of negative energy because it is, it is really taking you away of what is really key. And that's, you know, that's discovering that gem within you. And, um, and I think it's, it's competition usually really gets people into a mood where they only get frustrated. They really get frustrated because they can't get their own stuff around how they want it. And they keep on looking at the neighbor, you know, as we call it, you know, the grass at the neighbors is always greener than your own grasses. <laughs> but that's not what it is because usually the people that are, you know, in big businesses or have success in the view of what outsiders look at, you don't even know what they're struggling with. You don't even know what their, what their development, what their journey was getting to where they are today. And um, so it, it doesn't feed you with any positive vibes at all. And for me, it's been a great gift in really not being distracted by looking at what others do, but really walking my path in life. And, um, and for me, that is an extremely liberating feeling of having that. And that's what I, I, I would really wish a lot more people to, to do that. And of course, you know, in this world with so much social media, it's extremely tempting to constantly look at others. But I would definitely advise, you know, listeners to stop doing that and practice, you know, to look at what you, who you are and what you can do instead of, you know, getting carried away with um, the thought of that competition is all there is. Yeah. Cause I would say too, <clears throat> in where, where we are, there's a lot of internet marketing agencies and Joe have I, we don't view it as competition, but we look at it as, as opportunities to collaborate. So we, what you just said, we kind of apply mm -hmm. to our own business where we want to network with other marketing companies because maybe they do something well, that we don't, it'd be better for us to consult a client to give them the best resources, even not thinking so selfishly, right, Joe? We've talked about that a lot. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, I think it's better, like, 
like you said, if, if I can't help a business, how can I help them? What resources do I have in my box, my back pocket that I could connect those people with? Absolutely. Right. I love that's that. That's how we're different. A lot of, a lot of agencies aren't like that. They're sell, 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 compete, compete, compete. But we, it sounds so cliche, but we really try to do what's best for them, not us. We think of other people first before ourselves. So. Yeah, and I think the way you guys do your business is by really staying true to yourself and to really connecting, you know, connecting heart to heart and doing something that is really pure, pure from the soul, as I call it. And I think once you do that, that you attract the right people, you attract mm-hmm. the right clients, and people can feel it if you're really genuine and if it's right. Absolutely. Awesome. So not all our listeners and viewers are in their midlife stage, but the midlife crisis, myth or fact. So I'm, I just turned 48. Joe's younger than me. 48. So it doesn't, doesn't feel like I'm in midlife, but some people would consider that. So is it real or is it a fact? Should, is something, is the sky going to be falling on me pretty soon? And I'm like, oh, midlife crisis. <laughs> Tell me what that's all about. <laughs> I love that because I think, well, first of all, talking about a crisis, I think if you talk about a crisis, you call upon a crisis. So I think in that sense, I would definitely suggest us talking about different stages that we have in life. And I think um, you, it's really important because nature offers us different as stages of development in our lives. And for example, if we look at what happens around our 30th is that we kind of crystallize who we are in life. We detach from our parents and our guardians and all their influence. And we have formed our own opinions and pretty much arranged our lives. Once we get to our 40s, um, that's actually when our midlife phase already starts because this usually is a period of, that I work with a lot of clients that ask themselves questions like, is this really what I'm going to be doing the rest of my life? Or they have this nagging feeling kind of, as I call it, underneath the surface of, is this really it in life? And that's actually where a lot of happens. And and I think a good thing about it is that if you look at what the difference is, especially between women and men, is that What happens there is that women in this stage in life really struggle with finding a way in how to use their more male energy without losing their femininity and to combine that in life. Whereas men really learn how to listen more to their heart and to to their feelings. And that's really what happens in this stage in life. And sometimes, you know, if you if 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 you can really you know, get stuck with that, you know, usually men tend to then really go into their egos. And this is something that I think it's really important to really look into the details of what these different stages in life offer you and how you can use it in your advantage to really grow and learn and develop to a further level that you can also use that into your business. I absolutely, I think, I think I agree with you that there, as far as listening to your heart, I do seems like as soon as I hit that 40 mark, it was, all right, what books can I read on personal growth or business growth? Or what can I start listening to? How can I dial into who I am? And yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. Right. Maybe I was late. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I found the same thing. thing. <laughs> but it's a good thing because sometimes people, when they kind of skip these stages in life, Further on, some people really get into their midlife later on in their 40s or even 50s if they don't really get to learn how to listen to their heart and to really open up and to to do that. So, and sometimes even people do that or discover that in their 60s. And yeah. it, it, you know, it really depends on how, if whatever you do to really, as I call it, take on life, um, which is actually also the subtitle of my book. So um, it's a matter of choice. And I would say too, I think the pandemic may have accelerated that for some people when they were forced to get away from the routine of going to normal office work or just going out and about. Now you're forced to, all right, now you're on your own. There's more self-reflection time when you're working at home or not around people. Mm-hmm. So then Joe, like you said, when you hit 40, you start thinking of those things. I think everyone, no matter if they're midlife, post-life, whatever, well, not post-life, but toward the end of their lives have to reflect and think, what is this next stage for me? Am I happy now? Or what am I choosing to feel or do? So 
Absolutely. I, I love that that you bring that up because that really is true. I think I call these, you know, these gifts of time that we continuously have. But I think especially COVID-19 uh, for me has been, you know, the born of my book, actually, the birth of my book was in, in, in this, this period of time where I had time to reflect and to, to write this and get this inspiration. And I think when you're forced to, you know, to, to stand still and to reflect, also beautiful things can come out of that creativity power mm. of creativity is born just especially in times when we we get to stop and think about and feel who where we are in life now we're going to give a more formal introduction to Evelyn so Evelyn Van Ness is an entrepreneur and business coach she's an author of an upcoming book be relentlessly yourself which is out already but not the english version right the owner of uh, Eve Evelyn Van Ness business and life coaching and the owner and founder of Signature for Success. So um, I just wanted to ask, so what, what came first, Signature for Success or your business and life coaching? Or are they kind of two of the same? They're connected. Um, I started um, as an entrepreneur 15 years ago and I've always been leading teams and individuals in the corporate world. And in 2015, I started my own um, full-time coaching uh, business. And by doing that, I started working with entrepreneurs and, and I developed my own coaching method, which is called Signature for Success. And what I really felt is the, the urge and the desire to, to spread the word and also to, to even have a bigger ripple effect on more lives and more people that are, are in need of some coaching and some help. So what I did is I created my, my, my method. And I'm also mentoring a couple of coaches that are working with that method. So it's a wonderful way in collaborating, working together and reaching out to a bigger group, group of people. So we help both entrepreneurs and also people that are still in a career path. And some are considering going into entrepreneurship, but others are really searching for more clarity on who am I and what is my unique gift in life and how can I use that more leading my own career instead of just waiting for a wonderful opportunity to pass by and to hop in. Awesome. So Joe, first question. Yep. So what are some uh, lessons you learned early as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I love that question. I think there, there, there are many of them, but I think one of the things that I did when I stepped into my full-time coaching business is actually um, invest in my own development. I took on actually two coaches at the time. And um, for me, that was really a, de a deliberate choice in speeding up my own learning process and my own development. And, um, and that's not that I didn't trust myself to do it all by myself, but I just wanted to learn about, you know, things and especially about myself. And so that's a really important one. And I think also something is about um, walk your own path. And I think is, and it's kind of what we, we talked about earlier, is that do it your own way. And there is no one way you should do things. There is no one way, also not in marketing, not in sales. It's really getting to the core of who you are and using that also in your marketing, using that in your business and using that to connect with your clients. And I think these were, yeah, important lessons learned for me in earlier stages and that are still crucial nowadays. So uh, this question you may have answered already, but what is the best piece of advice you've been given? Is it that, um, you know, walk your own path? Is that, is that kind yeah. of, what it it's, is, or is it's related to that it's okay. related to that but I think one um there was one person years ago that when I stepped out of that corporate world where I was working as an interim manager um making long hours long days and 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 she advised me then why don't you just you know take two years and sit on the couch and you know s learn to slow down I still love that advice and I use it sometimes in my own business because by slowing down, you can really learn to see things that you won't be able to see when you're, you know, in, in a fast lane, when you're just going high speed ahead, you won't be able to see what is really going on and you won't be able to see yourself for who you truly are. So I would love to, uh, to take this one, uh, 
with you uh, here. <laughs> and then you wouldn't have written your book had you not slowed down because of the pandemic, your reflection. Absolutely. Time so Completely. took your own and advice there it. for sure. <laughs> I loved it. So being that we're a marketing company, why is marketing your business so important? Yeah. Well, um, I- imagine, um, every, as I said, you know, we all have our unique gift. And what would it be worth if we would all keep our unique gift for ourselves and not let the world know who we are and what we can do? You know, imagine that you're a lifesaver and you have this, you know, suitcase that you walk around the street and people that are on the street literally bleeding in need of your help. And you keep, the, you know, you the suitcase to yourself because you're not helping them. Then you're really, you know, that it's not only frustrating yourself of not finding that fulfillment, but people in the market need you. A lot of people are walking around, they need your advice, they need your expertise and really getting out there. So I always, you know, when you think about the question about people that say, you know, I don't want to be visible or I don't want to be out there. It's not in that sense about you. It really is about the people that need your help, that need your advice. And, um, and I think that's a, you know, a different way of framing it, but then really giving you, you know, more positive energy and, you know, stimulation to really get out there and let the world know who you are and what you can do. Awesome. So now we'll transition into, um, what we'll talk about with Eveline. So, so your book, the English version about to be released, uh, be relentlessly yourself, um, why did you choose, my question on that is what, what made you choose that title? Or obviously it was something different in Dutch and then the translation became that, but. Um, What's it in Dutch then? Yeah. Wees onverbiddelijk jezelf. Hey, repeat it, Joe. Uh, no. <laughs> so, no, it's actually, it's, it's, the translation is, it's, it's pretty much the same. Be relentlessly yourself. And. For me, this really is, you know, it's a teasing way of letting the world know is that, you know, show the world who you are and do that in a respectful way, but not, you know, making excuses and not showing up and not taking up your space in the market because there is room for everybody on this earth. We're all here, you know, as human beings and we're all here and we have our right to occupy our space. And I think for me, my life journey has been, you know, I've, I've had my peaks and my, my ups and my downs and learning my lessons in life through all kinds of things, through work, right. relationship, mm-hmm. friendship, family, you know, all, we all have these contexts, how we learn about ourselves. And for me, being relentlessly yourself and showing myself and sharing stories in my book and also you know offering a stage to 11 people that I've interviewed in my book also it's all these stories are are so inspiring for others to recognize things in or you know maybe you know or and to stimulate them to think about themselves and how they can go to a deeper level within themselves so for me be relentlessly yourself is really my way of living as I've learned nowadays and it's been a journey for me so you know it doesn't happen overnight (laughs) right so to our listeners and viewers out there um, we want really just so they get a couple of takeaways of like your book and then being relentlessly yourself so I'll read these five points on here so you touched it a little bit Um, know who you truly are now, nature versus nurture. There is no competition. We spoke about that. Taking up space and then know your unique added value. So uh, take it away. So know who you truly are. So we talked about that a little bit earlier, but anything just to connect our audience to, um, to put them on the right path uh, to be themselves and accept themselves. Yeah, and I think it absolutely, especially last thing you you just mentioned about accepting self-acceptance, but also about self-love is that a lot of people are so harsh to themselves. And you have this saying of, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated yourself. But why don't you turn that around? Why don't you start treating yourself the way you treat others? Because usually we're so friendly and polite to others and but the thoughts we think about ourselves and the things we 
actually feel about ourselves are not as nice. And I think if we would start with, you know, loving ourselves and, and, and accepting the fact that we are as we are would be a great starting point. And then the now nature versus nurture. Um, yeah, it's why actually did you put that um, talking point on there. Well, because I think what is really important in getting to the core of who you are is making the understanding what the difference is between what your true nature is and how you've, you know, um, the patterns that you've created in your life by your parents, the people that you've surrounded yourself with, your friends. Already when we're three years old in life, we're, you know, kind of getting away from that mm -hmm. nature. And what I see with a lot of clients in the stages when they're 30 and 40 and some even in their 50s, we really start to wonder, who am I? What is my true nature instead of what is my nurture? So it really is um, a call to the audience is, is start to work on making that distinction between nature and nurture, because that really is worth a lot if you get to the core of that. Awesome. I love the, I love this one. There is no competition. The only competition I think really is within ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So taking up space. So this one um, I was intrigued to hear more about. So um, yeah. talk to us about that in our audience, please. Yeah. Well, um, I would like to, to tell a little bit, a little story that I actually also share in my book. And that is, you, you probably remember situations where you, you know, step into a room or somewhere where the entrance is quite small. Usually women, when they do that, um, they already excuse themselves and they say sorry for just, you know, going into a room. And I think a lot of people for use that word sorry so many times without really understanding when it's needed to use the word sorry mm -hmm. to so to be more thoughtful about using the words the words that you speak you know it's the life that you live and continuously saying sorry in all kinds of situations is it's so many times it's completely unnecessary and i think this related to taking up space means that we all have the right to be here in this world and as long as you're you know your integrity and you're respectful to others you don't have to continuously say sorry so be aware of the words that you speak awesome and then the last one know your unique added value. Absolutely. And I think that's especially important for entrepreneurs is that know what makes you unique in not only what you do, but especially how you do it. And, um, and I think that is also something that you can use in your marketing. You, you, you can use in how you express yourself, you know, how you position yourself in the market. But um, you know, as we say, there, there are so many coaches in this world. There are so many social media experts in this world. There are so many marketing experts in this world. But what makes you specific? And um, so there it's, it's important to get to the core of that, because that's something that is that gives you really a good feeling and a specific feeling about what is it that I do different and than all the others. And also there is something that you can use in your marketing. Awesome. So we'll put our uh, Eveline's contact information on our social media feeds and everything. Um, and you offer a free consultation too, right? Yes, yes, yeah. For anyone that has a business related question that you can reach out for, um, for a complimentary uh, strategy uh, session. Awesome, we'll put that out there to share. So I just want, uh, before we close, um, last week was a busy week for us, Joe. We co-hosted a couple, uh, Free webinars with Google, reach customers online, Google, the basics of Google ads and the analytics one. What's your quick takeaway um, with those to our audience? Absolutely. It's just a, it's just free, free advice or free training that we're able to uh, give to businesses. And no matter how many times um, I've attended one of these workshops, I always learn something new. So anyone out there, uh, if you missed it, uh, we're more than happy to share the uh, presentation deck to each of these. Just uh, contact us and we'll get that out there to you. So, Evelyn, I want to just say thank you. Um, it's late where you are. It's 
uh, morning where we're at. It's evening after dinner uh, where you're at. And thanks for being our first truly international guest. It was a pleasure having you on, um, especially coming off of Edwin's episode with being happy and now being yourself, because I think it starts inside out. You'd be mm -hmm. happy with yourself and you'd be happy with other people. Uh, it Thank was just you. a perfect segue for you coming on and sharing with our audience today. Yeah, lovely. It was lovely being here with you guys. Yes, thank you. And then lastly, one more plug, Joe, for our Valor Cares initiative, please. Absolutely. So if you uh, have a business and you maybe don't have a website and you need one, or maybe your website is three or four years old, or you just don't have access to your website, uh, websites are really the key foundation for every business. Uh, so just uh, you could go to our Ask Valor Masterminds uh, website, click on Valor Cares, and there's a link for you to submit your information. Awesome. So on behalf of our sponsors, A Advanced Septic Services and CR Gutters, my name is Galen. I'm Joe. Neveline from the Netherlands, um, from the BD Local Studios in Tacoma, Washington. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care. See you guys next time.